Hey, what is going on everybody? Boylon here and in today's video, we're here to talk about farmability. Yes, so this is not a topic that I have brought up in a while because I thought things were getting better and things were improving. And for a little while they were. And some of you who are regulars on my channel know that I used to bring this up once or twice a month. And now we're bringing it back because while in part some of it has improved, there's a lot of it that haven't. And things that are kind of either going back uh, into the negatives or that were being really delayed on certain bits of farmability, particularly when it comes to orb farmability and red star related stuff as well so all that and more in today's video so if you know what to do then let's boil this down <sighs> you know I, I, I can't avoid adver uh, offers on my screen it's not even an advert i guess it is anyways they keep popping up woman's month special i haven't seen this one before uh, this is the first time actually I hit this one. Anyways, I wanted to bring you guys to the orb section of my store. And why am I starting here? Because a lot of people, well, they, they you know, if sometimes when I go through my, my stores and my videos occasionally, people are like, Boylan, what are you saving up your premium orbs for? There's a couple of things. One of them is like, I have no idea if they're ever going to bring a premium orb opening event milestone who knows right they brought gold orbs back for that so you have no really idea uh, the other thing is that they haven't added characters into this for a while we're going to actually take a look at the numbers and take a look at how long it's been basically since they've added anyone and what i was saying to myself and what i was saying to others is that i largely was not going to open because normally i open these when i have like a hundred but they've been so slow in putting characters in I told myself, I said, Boylan, you know, you're, I'm going to wait until Masters of Evil are all in the orbs. Now, I know that, you know, Moonstone is not even, well, Moonstone is just coming out. You know, her event is ongoing right now. Uh, but, you know, even some of the oldest characters, which have been out for actually quite a while now, haven't touched the orbs yet. So I'm probably at this point looking at another two month wait at least before all of the characters are out. But I want to also take a look at sort of uh, the trend sort of what things have gone on when it comes to when characters are first released, when they enter the orbs, when they open in, when they enter the red star orbs, uh, sorry, red star store and things like that. The basically the trajectory. You guys have seen this probably somewhere before on my character spreadsheet. So, that's what I'm doing. You know, I have 200 premium orbs. I also have good god, uh <laughs> 167 Ultimus orbs and I also have 10 mega orbs down here I think so again because there's nothing really worthwhile for me to pull them for but I want to take a look at the farm chart so you guys may have seen this before I haven't pulled this up in a little while I think my head's in the way I'm hopefully I can zoom this in a little bit so uh, this is what I call the Boylan farm chart this is basically who's become farmable over the last while you know i actually i started this all the way at january 2021 and i've continued to just include this when characters become farmable and so where most characters have become farmable lately have been through these new heroic campaign chapters right and so we started seeing that with here in november with wong and cersei in the first two i believe of heroes and first two chapters of Vill Vill heroes and villains and then Madeline Pryor was also added into hard mode. I, I, I didn't have the specific note in there, but yeah, she's in there. Nobody really cares about that, though. And then Mr. Negative. Well, not farmable as such. I, it pretty much is because we're getting five shards for him on the daily web. Now, how long is that going to be going on? I don't know. I think I'm at six star Mr. Negative now. So I guess we'll see what happens when most of us have seven star Mr. Negative if they decide to do something else. But if you look at the total, and this is really what's important. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. On the right-hand side is where I have sort of the numbers, right? And these are this column, by the way, is the total release characters for that month and what the net score is versus the farmable characters. So, you know, if we've had four release characters and we had four farmable, which I don't think has ever happened, you know, then we get a zero, which means that we break even. Green means it's good or it breaks even. Yes, green is zero, which means that, you know, it's not getting worse. Anything in the red on the right column means that things are getting worse. And so things were largely getting worse until about, what is this? Uh, September, I think, 2022, last year. 
And then things started breaking even, and things started getting better. With the inclusion of the hard mode campaigns, things were getting better. So you can see actually that we were only having three characters released, and we were like plus one, or plus two, or whatever, based on how many characters we came out. And January wasn't too bad either, actually, because we had Phantom X. I believe th these were hard. I didn't, I should have added it in. I don't know which one, three and four? Somewhere in there, maybe chapters three and four uh, were in here for Phantom X and Mighty Thor and then Dazzler. Now is also on a campaign note as well, but she was originally put into the war story, as you guys know. Now, uh, we did have, uh, in February, we had Valkyrie and Evil Strange with the release of Heroes uh, 5 and Villains 5. And then Deathlock was added into the Arena Orb. And then more recently, we had Brawn straight into the Blitz Orb. And Viv Vision on Heroes, uh, or sorry, Hard Villains Chapter 6, which we're in right now. Now, we are expected to get a few more, believe it or not. In case you didn't know, some people didn't really know, but you can actually check, or maybe you did look at it later, but you can actually check that they have a plan for Chapter 7. And you can go in here and check them out, and you can see that Morbius is here on 7-6. Not that we really need that, but Spider-Man Noir... New character on Heroes 7-9, for what it's worth, I have very low stars for him, and then you can do the same on Villains, and for 6, you see She-Hulk, and then on 9, you see Black Panther. Now, I don't know why, actually, you know what, I'm not entirely sure why it's listed Spider-Weaver, so I guess that's not a thing. So I fucked up there. Uh, someone told me that Spider Weaver was on it, but I don't see that. Maybe they got that mixed up with She-Hulk. I don't know why you're going to be far big She-Hulk on a note anyways. But we are getting two characters, right? So Chapter 7 will give you Spider-Man Noir and Black Panther 1M. And I assume that that's going to be sometime in April because we're not getting any more than, you know, a set of releases every once a month, basically, we're getting. Those are probably going to be the first Wednesdays of every month. And so at this point, you know... Where are we at? Well, we were at plus one, which was good because we had only two characters released in February. But this month here in March, we have four characters, if you include Apocalypse, three if you don't, with only two farmable and a minus one rating. So things are going back down the other way, which gives us a grand total of minus 12. What does minus 12 mean? I I've mentioned this before, and that means we're basically 12 characters behind, in my opinion, uh, from where we should be. And I think that we should be within four months of characters being out and being made farmable. That is my goal. I know it's not their goal, but I think it's, it's reasonable expectations. I know that Star Wars Galaxy Heroes has a more predictable release schedule in terms of when characters come out, uh, when they become farmable, when they when they, when they get in their orbs or whatever their orbs are called, you know, that kind of thing. But we're not seeing that predictability or, or that kind of reliance here in Marvel Strike Force. So, I want to jump back to what I call my character chart. Some of you guys have seen this before. It's been a while since I pulled this up. And I want to take a look at here the red, actually, these three columns. So, this is the available in orbs column, the elite store column, and the farmable column. The farmable, basically, the date that they have become. Farmable, I also have this one here called the pre-release offer. That's just the date that they uh, came out and released the offers. And that's kind of important too. So you can see the gap actually between uh, some of the other I instances here. So right off the bat, what are the problems? Some of the problems are that they're taking forever to enter the orbs. And again, I, I brought this up in the beginning because I have like 200 premium orbs just sitting around now because I'm waiting for the Masters of Evil. Now, we had Titania because I want to jump ahead a little bit. Where we're at right now, Agent Venom essentially so agent venom is here he was available in the orbs on the 24th of february which is almost a month ago now and he was in the elite store on the 10th of february now in the past characters used to go into the orbs first before the red stars and that got reversed at some point i don't know when but it's probably here uh, uh yeah here so somewhere in August of last year with Unlimited X-Men, you can see the Sunfire went into the orbs on the 18th of August, actually alongside Mighty Thor, and then the Elite Store on the 23rd of August. And then at some point, like here at Valkyrie, that was flipped around where they went into the Red Star Store before the orbs. Until then, we were always getting them within like five weeks of them going into the or uh, into the from the pre-release offer to the orbs. Now now we are Titania. January 24th, still nowhere to be seen. It's been about, it's going to be about two months and not even in the Elite Store, which is supposed to come first now. 
Uh, so that's a bit of a concern to me because Agent Ven actually Agent Venom was not very good either. But if we take a look at some of the other characters like Nemesis, for example, uh, Nemesis was a pre-release offer of the 7th of December and he was in the Elite Store about four weeks later and then in the orbs another two weeks later. So six weeks, four weeks for the Elite Store, six weeks for the orbs. Okay, so that wasn't too bad there. Uh, U.S. Agent, let, let's, let's do Agent Venom, so that's kind of the most recent thing that we had. 15th of January that he came out on the release offer. And then we had uh, 10th of February. So again, four weeks. Four weeks on the Elite Store, and then two more weeks. Actually, great, great timing compared to exactly the same as Nemesis. So four weeks into the Elite Store, six weeks into the Orbs. Where is it? So at this point, that uh, Titania should have been in the Elite Store. Um third week of february and should have been in the orbs by early march at the latest none of that actually in fact given that same timeline absorbing man should be in the red stars and or absorbing man should also be in the orbs kang should be in the red star store maybe not quite in the orbs yet but that's where we should be basically absorbing man should, uh, titanium and absorbing man should be in the orbs kang should be in the red star that's where we should be. And that's getting delayed for whatever reason. Now, unless we're going to get a lot of things up front really quickly, like they're going to acknowledge that they fucked up, that they're really behind for whatever reason, I don't know, you know, but otherwise they're dragging. And this is concerning to me because while they're not predictable, they have done something similar in the past. So I'm just using the data to kind of extrapolate what's going on right now. And, you know, farmability aside, we haven't even got to the farmable chart. They're not keeping up with what they're supposed to be doing when it comes to availability in orbs and the Red Star store. But they're carrying on with character releases. We've had Captain America, obviously, with the start of the patch. And we've had Union Jack, we have Union Jack coming uh, this week. And what's interesting is I actually thought that they were slowing down on character releases. So if we take a look at Ma February, sorry, not March, February, we had Absorbing Man came out on the 2nd of February. We had Kang came out on the 16th of February, two weeks later. And then we had Moonstone about two weeks more later on the 3rd of March. Then we had Apocalypse and then we had the patch. Okay. And so, uh, you know, Apocalypse aside anyways, it looked like characters were about two weeks apart. And I guess they were, if you were considering Moonstone to Captain America and bypassing Apocalypse. But now we're getting it back every week here, basically from Cap to Union Jack and whoever else is coming up next. Uh, I don't have Firestar in here, actually, so I'm assuming she's last, but I don't know. And then Iron Fist, Bucky Barnes, and whatever. It could be one week after another. And I and that, that's a problem when it comes to the farmability chart, because it means that we're going to get uh, even further behind if they keep releasing characters every single week without giving us some sort of olive branch when it comes to farmability. They're going to get even further behind on this number that characters have not become farmable. You know, we let, let's address the elephant in the room, right? What characters are... Oh, sorry, that's too far. Uh, <laughs> Agatha Harkness, right? On this line here. Agatha still unfarmable how many days 349 fucking days i have this other the column here called oh shit called yeah not not called oh, oh shit called the days since release category and it's where the hell is she now too far sorry <laughs> i got lost agatha where are you okay over here it's been 349 days since agatha came out right anything in the in the red is above 180 which is highly unacceptable in my opinion you know and then basically sunfire sunfire where are you 280 days coming up you know and so this is really really bad these are characters that have no reason anymore to be hidden and so where are we otherwise though you know where are we actually at uh brawn actually has been added so i need to fix this uh, so we're not there we're actually down here at spider weaver 2099 and noir for what it's worth and even the this is you know, it doesn't even matter for spider weaver anymore right because it's been about six months more but we got the the free shards and shit nobody really cares about that uh spider weaver is uh, sorry spider-man 2099 is almost at uh six months as well at this point so this is where we should be at but they're just moving things along really really slowly uh the eternals i don't know if i've noted actually when they went into the orbs here yeah, the 19th of October, 19th of October. So it's been six months, 
I guess, since they've been in, maybe about six months, uh, since they put into the premium warps. And I think at this point, though, they need to rotate. If they're going to do this, they need to rotate this way more frequently because we're getting actually a lot of premium orbs. For better or for worse, you know, premium orbs are fairly easy to get. We get one daily plus the, you know, the orb blitzes and, and whatever other ways that they come into the game. But the problem is, is that these things are not being rotated quick enough. Blitz store, raid store. When was the last time we had a raid store inclusion? I mean, going back to my character farm chart. Whoa, Nico in December. I mean, I guess that's almost four months now, but nobody cares, right? You know, and so they're just really dragging. They're, they're just kind of relying on the hard mode campaigns to fund the farmability, but not actually acknowledge, you know, some of the other instances, which are things like, you know, the uh, orbs in the Red Star store, and also how fast they're releasing characters again. I thought they were slowing down, but it turns out they're not. So I think there's a bit of a problem here, in my opinion. I hope that they'll realize this who are we kidding? You know, they're, they're not. I, I don't know why I say that because I've kind of lost all hope that they're going to uh, make any reasonable amount of changes towards this and, you know, not be complete dickheads and keep characters for no real reason from being farmable, namely Sunfire and Agatha. I feel like I had to address this again because a lot of people were asking me about when the next time I was going to do a farmability video and this is it. So I'm still going to beat that drum about farmability once or twice a month because I think we need to. Because this is Marvel Strike Force and is it going to make a difference? I have no idea, but it's a bit cath uh, cathartic and, you know, it, it kind of, I like talking about it because it makes me feel better to get this off my chest. So that's the end of this video, everyone. And until next time, stay safe and healthy and I'll see you all later and good luck farming absolutely nothing. Boylan, signing out.